Hey, welcome back everyone. Toysh is here and I'm back yet again with a real quick recap for everything San Diego Comic-Con 2023. This will be a video on everything that I thought was the major standouts from all the reveals that took part over the 1,375 day convention, right? At least that's what it felt like. It felt like we were all trapped in a casino with no lights but man, it was a lot of fun, don't get me wrong, of course. It's to that point where every single company is doing great things, right? There is something for everyone, whether or not a company or two or five are all tackling the same subject. It's kind of hard to say, dang, yeah, it's, it's, how am I going to pick and choose between these? From tons of articulation to an excellent sculpt, different scales... Sky's the limit. Everyone is doing something rad. There is something for everyone. And it's really to that point where space is definitely becoming an issue. I don't know about yourself, but yeah, I'm certainly running into that problem. That's for sure. But like I said, in the meantime, right, this is going to be a real sweet vid. Just everything and anything, all the great photos and whatnot that showed off san diego comic-con 2023 so in the meantime sit back relax grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee you got to do that that's integral to your viewing right i'm sure these are the absolute best of the best reveals of san diego comic-con 2023 at least what i think of but i'm sure you'll tell me down below whether i'm right or not but here we go so first and foremost, now I'm going to tell you, this is quite amazing. Let's just say that. It's it's $1,700. I'm just going to say, if you bought it at Comic-Con, it was $1,500. But the fact that you get a self-transforming Grimlock is pretty darn awesome. I mean, I got to tell you, the Optimus Prime, that's great, and everything else that they did from Robeson. But this is stellar. Just in the look itself, it's the old toy brought back to life, and it transforms itself. It's amazing, but it is expensive. Likewise, with another great reveal, right, from San Diego Comic-Con. We all know this is coming. We saw the teases leading up to it. But this is the Cat's Lair, the Thundercats Cat's Lair from Super 7. And this is going to be, one, another pricey item. You got to factor in that. That's a big deal. And number two, of course... Space And I did briefly talk with Brian Flynn from Super 7, which he did express that, yes, it's ridiculous, but equally as amazing. And I have to agree. I'm glad I'm not a Thundercats collector. I just have to say that right now. I know a lot of people out there are stoked. Brian actually did touch on the fact of this is uh, quite the piece where you would kind of sort of design your collector room around this because you have to see this in person i know people see on the photos even i myself made the joke over you know i guess it's big right it's it's enormous it's ridiculously big but it's equally really cool so for those of you out there that are thundercats collectors you've got all the thundercats ultimates you got the thunder tank now you need the giant playset catsle right to put all your figures in and kind of park the the, the tank right in the back. It doesn't fit underneath the feet. You know, that's, that's not going to work. That would be insanely big. But there is enough room on this whole thing to really create a awesome diorama. Is it for me? No. But it was quite the talk of the convention. Everybody was going over to see it. It was in a huge glass case right in the middle of their booth. It's pretty exciting. And that is what San Diego Comic-Con is all about. It's about the absurd. It's about the great reveals that you would not normally see anywhere close to a toy aisle. And yes, they've definitely achieved that. So I will have links down in the description below if you are interested. 650 plus 100 shipping and handling, just FYI. There's two sides. You get a little conference table so they can all have lunch together after they've beating up Mumra and whatnot but yeah just keep in mind it's a little bit pretty penny but it's uh, it's pretty darn cool if you ask me now over on the mattel side of things with the masterverse collection we got a good look at some not only upcoming packaging right they're changing that up a little bit in fact i like that uh, they even coined the term a little cameo window for the packaging that's pretty cool but the standout for me was of course 
uh, snout spout. Or you call him hose nose, right? You can call him whatever you like, but he's definitely very cool looking. Great paint on him, great sculpts, nice accessories. You get the idea. He's really decked out to the nines. So look for him uh, coming soon. More info coming up. This was really cool. So this is a new company. This is Syndicate Collectibles. And they had a really nice, simplistic booth, right? It was just enough to kind of catch your eye, draw you in. No frills, but that, it, it doesn't need to be frills just yet. And they're doing all kinds of crazy action figures. And they really do bring me back to around the early thousands and such. Maybe a little bit in the 90s, you know what I mean? They got that little touch to them. They've got true romance figures, which posted them people went crazy for him it was really nice to see you got christopher walken <laughs> it's really awesome i gotta say so these will be seven inch action figures and look for these later everything is just kind of on display just keep that in mind release date sometime in 2024 not only that but we're also getting some ghoulies action figures which again i think that hit a lot of horror fans, right? That's pretty cool. It's the first time we're seeing ghoulies. Better get yourself a toilet, right, for display purposes. Or maybe they're doing one. Who knows? It remains to be seen. But again, more info on these are coming soon. Look for these yeah, around next year as well. Blood Sports, 7-inch scale, getting some representation. Just an FYI, the ghoulies are a little bit smaller, of course. They're smaller figures, but within that 7-inch scale. But Blood Sport... Equally looks as great. Look at the sculpts, the attention to detail, and the musculature, right? I've never one. See, I'm one of those when I see superhero figures, like, I, it doesn't matter. You, you go as crazy as you want. Nothing really has to make sense. That's the fun of comics. But when you do see a proportional action figure sculpt, just a statue in general, right? You notice that. You go, ah, that's, that guy knows his stuff. So, yes, we will be getting some blood sports action figures which hey again that's pretty darn cool i think a lot of people are gonna be excited about that don't worry three and three quarter inch collectors they got you too with some golden girls action right so you can go down to florida and retire in style i think i did see a comment on my photos that said i hope that their hands can hold lightsabers and get light see that's really just the fun of these figures. So again, Syndicate Collectibles, Golden Girls, Retro 3 and 3 quarter inch action figures. Mostly everything you see from Syndicate is going to be around 2024, including this amazing looking pumpkin head. There are a few scales to this guy, so more info on that later. But pumpkin head looking all sinister as ever. The sculpt, the paint, just the work on this. Man, oh man. So there's going to be different scales, like I said, but remains to be seen. We'll see what actually comes out. But uh, yeah, the 112 scale pumpkin head, for instance, around 2024. SRP to be determined. So we will see soon enough to then go from Syndicate Collectibles over to Jada Toys. They did have some new Mega Man figures on display. This one with Mega Man and Fireman and Iceman. These are wave one. I think that these look absolutely fantastic. They totally remind me of Jack Specific with their whole Mario line, right? I love the attention to detail, the colors, the look. They absolutely nailed it. Much into wave two with Elect Man and Cut Man. And you got the, you can help me out, the green Mega Man. I think it's the Grass Blaster or whatever <laughs> it is. But Elect Man, he looks great. And I loved Playing the old Game Boy game, I still have that, right? With all the robot masters, Cutman throwing his little blades at you. That's awesome. The facial expressions are awesome. So, very stoked on Mega Man so far. And they even showed off Wave 3. So, again, what really draws my eye to these, the colors, the sculpt, the fun is brought forth that you saw with the actual video game itself. In all manner of the video game, one through, what are we on, 10, 11, something like that. Again, having Mega Man with the Unmask, that's very cool as well. So again, all these robot masters, everything you see here, look for more details coming soon. So you'll probably see these well into early next year. Now, over on the McFarland end of things, 
they didn't have too much on display, right? They did have the initial showing the preview party sort of deal where they had product that we've already seen. But during their panel, and I'm a huge fan of their Batman 66 line. Now, it's going to deter a little bit from the actual show, but they're going to start implementing some of the cartoons, the straight-to-DVD cartoons, and then, of course, the comic book. The one in particular for me that really stands out that I've really wanted and been asking for is Lord Deathman. So I'm absolutely stoked on him. Over in the actual DC multiverse, though, we will be seeing the more collector-ish $30 figures. And, of course, this will be Wave 2. And they've really kind of, hopefully, we'll say, upped it. You can check out my video now. I go into a lot more detail. But I'm really digging that Total Justice-ish Hawkman. You got Firestorm. The Sinestro, I'd go either way, honestly. But those two were really the standout. Much were, and I can't believe I'm saying this, the, the Batman and Robin collect a build wave with the Mr. Freeze. But I mean, come on. You got George Clooney, Uma Thurman, Alicia Silverstone. You have Arnold Schwarzenegger and, of course, Chris O'Donnell. What a lineup, right? Very cool. Awesome to see them tackling this. It just it brings that nostalgia, even though I can't stand that movie. But it's still fun. It's a, a nice part and a, a nice memory of childhood, right? Moving on. Now this is this is where this is where we're gonna get heavy, right? This is this is gonna be amazing. So in the NECA Toys booth, what I really liked is that they kept bringing you back every single day. And when it came to the Ninja Turtles, and they have a ton of Ninja Turtles. If you want a booth tour of the entire shebang. You go on my Instagram, I'll put a link down in the description below, at Blainer Things from NECA Toys. Walk me through the entire thing. It was killer. They have so much coming. It's insane. Ninja Turtles being the biggest one, of course. But they got gargoyles. They've got dinosaurs. I mean, it's insane. So the big reveal for me, of course, was the Archie Wrestling Turtles. This is one that I have been asking for. Well, ever since I was a little kid, reaching the Archie TMNT Adventures, right? With the whole intergalactic stump wrestling arena, right? And you got all the turtles. Here's a here's a little quiz for you guys, for those of you out there that know. Which turtle out of the four ended up winning the stump intergalactic wrestling? And who was the final opponent that the winning turtle had to battle? Hopefully, we'll see them as an action figure as well, right? Uh, anyways, I absolutely love... The black costume for Raph. Leo's looks great. Donatello looks awesome. I mean, they they absolutely nailed it. Just to kind of give you a heads up. Yes, these are just prototypes that are on display. They will have full articulation. No problemos. And like all the other NECA toys that they do for the cartoon TMNT, they'll have accessories and the whatnot. So I'm very, very stoked on these. And that's not it. Not only did they have Ken Mitroni doing signings, which... I did not get to attend. I really wish that I could have shook that guy's hand for all the amazing artwork that he did when I was a kid growing up. But another one of those is, of course, Belly Bomb. And I'm very stoked on the way this guy came out. He looks amazing again. TMNT Adventures, for those of you out there, he will have a moving jaw. The eyeball will be able to shift and look around. That's pretty cool, right? They go all out at that NECA Toys. I tells you what, he just looks killer. So, you can look for all these coming soon, basically. If you notice a little Krang down there, I did get my hopes up. I thought, oh man, uh, that'll be cool, right? So, for those of you out there, this particular look for Krang was how he was in the TMNT Adventures. Didn't really show up too much. He was kind of like in and out along with Shredder, but uh, eventually he would hook up with Slash as a way to escape his uh, exile that occurred in the in the comic book. And you could put him on Slash just like that. And that's, that's what I like to see. Perhaps eventually we might even see a Shredder with a Krang on top of his head. Eh? For those of you out there that know what I'm talking about, I wouldn't put that past NECA toys. Also, we're going to be getting Mondo Gecko. Mutanimals, TMNT Adventures... They're freaking rocking it. It's all my old comic books brought back to life in 2023. He's going to come with several accessories. He's got his purple skateboard. 
I mean, I would love to see them do Candy Fine. That would be amazing. He looks great. Zilu over on Instagram, I believe he had a hand in most of these. Just FYI. Go check out his page for the full details. But like I said, all of these, Mondo Gecko included, uh, yeah, will be coming soon. And then... <laughs> When everybody saw this, it was kind of like the Cat Slayer, but like in reverse, because you're like, well, it's not as big as a Cat Slayer, but to have an 18 to 20 inch Krang's Android body for my collection, I mean, why not, right? So this guy, I did briefly talk with those at NECA Toys. He's going to be, again, around 18 to 20 inches tall, give or take. He will have swap out accessories. They are still trying to figure out what they're going to do with him as far as where he'll be available. So look for more details on that. And uh, yeah, he, <laughs> it is absolutely massive. I mean, I would not put it past them to include a little Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle so you can slip in underneath right in his neck and do some damage, right? Break the little power stone that Donatello has to hit with his bow staff. So that's amazing. I shrink him back down the size, but yeah, it is killer. So killer to see this thing in person i cannot wait to add this to my shelf my ninja turtle collection for the cartoon stuff just looks absolutely amazing and equally as amazing everything that neca is doing for the mirage turtles line again everything that they kind of started showing right they kind of put things in every other day right that little reveals and leatherhead was one of those and if you don't know Leatherhead from the Mirage comics, I know a lot of people think of him as Playmates or even TMNT Adventures or the newer type stuff. Leatherhead was a very complicated character. And it, the artwork back then, it just it really just resounded with me as a character. I absolutely love Leatherhead. So in every way, shape, or form, yeah, NECA Toys did a great job. in the sculpt, he looks amazing. I'm really looking forward to getting this guy he's even got the little patch in the eye right that's pretty darn cool i gotta tell you though if i really had to pick a favorite and it's not gonna be my absolute number one favorite that'll be at the end of this video but it's pretty darn up there it was a little bit of a hidden easter egg when we kind of finalized the booth tour but the rat king is coming and that is one of those especially especially in the mirage comics the Rat King is this just bizarre character. And I always love the look at him. He's creepy. It's weird. He has this really odd relationship with Splinter, right? In so many ways. His tale, his story kind of is told in really weird ways, right? Where, is he dead? Yes, he is. Is he a god? Maybe. You know, he's the god of rat. It's just, it's wackadoo. But the design of the character is really what stands out. So again, I cannot wait for this. He is every bit the monster that he thinks he is. He's got a little rat right there, right? It's killer. They absolutely nailed it. So Leatherhead and the Rat King, some of my favorite reveals. Absolutely, hands down. Now, over on the Marvel Legends route, we did know that these were coming, right? We did know that they're going to be getting X-Men 97. You got the little three and three-quarter inch figures, which totally after... But then I saw the Marvel Legends, and I'm going to be honest with you, when I first saw them, they had really blurry photos because everybody took them with a potato, apparently, right? When they were kind of teasing it before the official reveal at the Marvel Legends panel. But they're going to be on a retro card. They're going to be specifically aimed at the new X-Men, the animated series for the 97. And Wolverine looks great. I honestly will tell you, I think that that is the best Wolverine head sculpt they have done thus far if they would have put a little blue in the hair really kind of spruced him up it would have been even better he always kind of comes out looking like an old woman but i love the colors the yellows he's pinless this time around this when i first saw them i kind of was like i i already have these the, the, these are not gonna be much that i need to uh, really go after and lo and behold, when I saw them in the glass case, really up close and personal, they, they are very well done. And I'm actually really stoked on that, that they actually really went the whole nine yards on these. They look like the animated property. What you're seeing in the little tidbits that we've gotten for X-Men 97. Bishop looks great. Now, he is a little bit redesigned from his initial looks 
on X-Men the Animated Series, which is totally fine. Character progression and all that. So really digging the way Bishop looks. And they even made the comment to say, you know, if you're not really going for X-Men 97, these will fit pretty much flawlessly into your Marvel Legends collection. Gambit, I think he really does fare the best. I really do like that Wolverine head sculpt. But this is a head portrait that really stands out. And he does look incredibly animated which then I am definitely looking for. That's really where I'm at with Marvel Legends. Everything and anything animated, Spider-Man animated, X-Men animated, I'm having the most fun with that. It's got the playing card. Largely, you could kind of say, he might end up being pretty much the standard gamut that you may have in your collection, but that head portrait really does him a lot of justice. Same thing with Storm. Now, depending on the design, I really wish that they would have put in some heels on her to really kind of differentiate her. I really like the head portrait. I like that they're going more for the mohawk now with Storm, so that's really cool to see. But at the same time, it's not exactly what I think about with Storm. So this one is kind of like, yeah, okay. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I say this now, but I will be grabbing this entire collection. But I'm a huge fan of the original design for the original series of Storm. And really, it's kind of the same thing with Rogue, right? There's little subtle changes here and there. It's kind of like Batman the Animated Series and then when it came back for TNBA, right? Little subtle changes here and there. Maybe we'll have some big changes as well. She no longer has a brown coat. She's got the green coat that's part of the animation. At least that's what we see for the promos and whatnot. So, again, yeah, Rogue looks pretty good as a updated design but i gotta say as far as all these figures the one that really stands out the most to me because i don't have an updated magneto i know i took my time with that family three pack right with magneto and quicksilver thing, and i goofed it and then it it went astronomical in price so i'm glad i get another chance at magneto and it's every bit the magneto i think about from either video game to X-Men the Animated Series to Jim Lee comic books. Yeah, that's a stellar looking Magneto. I know it's probably not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but dang, he looks pretty good. So I'm really stoked on all of these. Thanks so much for checking out my photos. They did send press images, but I thought, well, at least where I took photos, we can definitely look at those. Now, real quick, over on the Cowboy Bebop side of things... We're going to be getting the Fig Zero version of Spike Spiegel. He's a 1-6 collector edition. He looks great. He's got cloth goods. Really like the head portrait on him. I think the clothing looks really well done. He's got the smirk to him. He's got the gun. Believe it or not, he's got the cigarettes. It's a little bit bent, right? When he, A couple episodes, he pulls it out. His cigarettes always got damaged and whatnot, so... I just laughed. After coming out of the Comic-Con Museum on last week during Tuesday, they had an opening thing, and having a big Cowboy Bebop exhibit, kind of had Cowboy Bebop on the brain. So that was like, oh, yeah, that's that's pretty darn cool. So this one will be through 3-0, Bandai Namco, and Crunchyroll, and it will be coming soon. Over on the Mezco side of things, they had a really great booth set up. But I got to tell you, it wasn't until this image when they sent out solicitations, more towards the end of the convention, we're going to be getting the mask from them. This is the comic book version, not the Jim Carrey version. Jim Carrey version is based off this insanity. But that's another one of those figures that really hasn't had a whole heck of a lot of representation in action figure form. So whenever this does come available, uh, yeah, I will be... I'm going to be going for the mask. This one really stands out to me. It's just one photo. We need to get more details and whatnot. He's got the big teeth. He's every bit the comic book insanity. Really looking forward to the mask. Not going to lie. Now, to kind of go back to X-Men the Animated Series, but on the Mondo scale, of course, 1-6 scale, we got a good look at the upcoming New York Comic Con 2023 exclusive Omega Red for their X-Men the Animated Series line. Now, I did say, hey, I like what Hasbro's doing with the X-Men 97, but I love, love what Mondo is doing with the X-Men the Animated Series original series, right? They know how to do cell shading right. This thing is a standout. When you stand and look at this, 
the amount of paint, the look, everything about this is X-Men the Animated Series. This was a highlight. He's got the big old twisty tubes that come out of his arms. The paint really stands out. Couldn't ask for something better. So again, 1-6 scale, New York Comic Con, 2023 exclusive, prototype shown, yada yada. But look for more details coming soon. Now, X-Men the Animated Series is one thing, but you're still flipping the channel. You're going to come back to Fox Kids, right? And that's where Batman the Animated Series comes in. And let me tell you something. When I saw this, Batman Mask of the Phantasm, the Phantasm. Now that was killer. And the awesome folks over at Mondo really uh, did take me to the booth, told me all little tidbits I need to know. This Phantasm will have a different torso to better match Andrea Beaumont, right? So you can swap between Phantasm and Beaumont, right? Because initially you think it's her father. She's kind of got like a bigger type costume to kind of hide her more tinier physique. But uh, yeah, they will have a bunch of swap out parts and whatnot, and it should be killer. This definitely has a presence. This has a life of its own. This is amazing. Anything with the Phantasm, come on, forget about it. Look for this uh, a coming soon, right? Fall 2023. Now, over on the Jack Pacific side of things, this was actually a lot of fun. They had a really quick panel, right? They showed off some of the new 2.5-inch Mario play sets. They do have, if you want to head over to their Instagram, they have a little video and such. You can look at how this thing really moves. Deluxe Bowser Battle Playset. It's supposed to enact where you would reach the Bowser at the end of every Super Mario level, and you have to hit the axe, drops the bridge, he falls in the lava. You get the idea. And it actually does that. It lights up. It's got sounds. It looks amazing. So it does every single thing from the video game. And that's what Jack nails every single time from their play sets to the 2.5 inch figures, to the four inch figures, to the movie figures, and everything World of Nintendo, right? I love what they're doing over there. And plus, they revealed for the 2.5 inch figures, you're going to get a giant wiggler. So you could say from SNES, N64, everything and anything. Very cool. I absolutely love, again, I, it just brings a smile to my face. I love what they're doing at Jack Specific. And I love that it's few and far between. It's not a like a constant onslaught of buy this, buy this, buy this. It comes out every once in a while and you usually have no problems whatsoever getting a hold of it. Now, over on the Diamond Select sort of things, they showed off two incredible pieces. First and foremost, we're getting a Nihilus. That's going to be their upcoming bigger Marvel Select figure, which, let's be honest, they do amazing bigger type characters, especially when they hit those Marvel Select villains and whatnot that are just enormous and they're decked out in detail. They're great for Marvel Legends figures, right? To have those bigger type characters because, well, Diamond does it right. Nihilus is going to come with a ton of extra hands. He's going to have effects. He looks amazing. These are just renders, of course. He's got the big wings, but you can really pretty much know what to expect looking at these. Likewise, with the Crimson Dynamo. This is going to be another one of those great Iron Man figures that they've been making lately. So he will come with alternate head portraits, right? Ivan Vanko, pretty darn cool. Energy effect and whatnot. So look for more details on these coming soon. These are just early reveals and whatnot. But we will definitely see some more coming for these uh, coming soon. Now, I just want to say thank you very much for watching this video. Thanks for sticking with me. I'm, as always, curious to know what you guys think about all of my choices for what I think about as being the best of the best reveals. Because it's what I like to collect. But for those of you who know me, for those of you who know my channel, of course... My heart belongs to Spider-Man the Animated Series. And during the Marvel Legends panel, they revealed the fourth box set for the VHS line. Now, it's Smythe and Peter Parker. Season 2 Peter Parker, right? Let's look at some better photos, of course. Smythe being one of those that I have been wanting for years. Ever since the Toy Biz. The Toy Biz figure is the only other figure of Smythe when he's the ultimate spider slayer now he debuted the 90s then subsequently he debuted on spider-man the animated series i did joke around the marvel legends team and i said you know what 
I'm glad that he has this sweet spot between Spider-Man Animated and the comic book because while he is every bit Spider-Man the Animated Series, I'm glad they didn't put those little nipple things on the spikes coming out of his shoulders. All right? Let's just be honest. But yeah, that's Alistair Smythe. He's got the yellow lenses, or at least he's got yellow eyes, right? So I definitely appreciate that. He's got that really cool insectoid bug-like body that, well, in the animated series, Landon ended up uh, making him a cyborg, essentially. So he's awesome. He rocks. He comes with extra hands. That's it. No extra heads. Nothing like that. Just extra hands. And likewise with season two, Peter Parker. Now, this again is another one of those instances where I said to them, why did we go with season two Peter Parker over season one with the polo shirts? And they kind of laughed and they said, well, this version really does fit. And I do agree with that. He had this in season two all the way to the end of the show. So he definitely had this look a lot more. The polo shirt is definitely one of those more iconic looks for Spider-Man the Animated Series. And the Legends team did say that they underestimated the popularity of that shirt because when Shop Disney said, hey, we're going to actually do the shirt, people went nuts for it, except for the little Spider-Man logo on that, of course. To which I then replied, well, now you have to do an exclusive, right? And just do the polo shirted version of Peter Parker, which I will buy, definitely. By which then I added, of course, if you're going to do the polo shirt Peter Parker... As an extra bonus, maybe an exclusive somewhere else, put it on Pulse. I'll get it. I don't care. Let's do the Aerosmith version of Peter Parker from the Alien Costume Saga. And that will be a little bit of a a nod to the animated series opening. It's a wacky, wild design. It looks great. And I do like it. I think everything else about it definitely works. And he comes with a camera. So, again, it's every bit Season 2 Peter Parker, and believe it or not, this two-pack actually does make sense. Because in the episode, uh, Smythe ends up calling Peter Parker, he talks to him, he briefly talks to him on the phone, so it definitely works. If this would have been a polo-shirted Peter Parker with the chameleon, so you could say Day of the Chameleon, sure, that would have worked as well. But you can clearly see everything that they come with, you got thwipping hands, for Peter Parker, you've got open and fisted hands for Smythe, Parker's got the camera, very stoked on this, this is my favorite reveal, Uh, more of this please, X-Men the Animated Series, 97, all that jazz, but Spider-Man the Animated Series, it just looks awesome, very stoked on this, you can see all that gorgeous artwork from Harry Moore Design, which again, I missed him as well, so Harry, if you're listening, I'm sorry I didn't come by, it looks awesome, he had Prince, he was signing in the booth and whatnot, Comic-Con was crazy, yo, not even joking, you go in there with a plan, it's gone in five seconds, it really is, there's so much to look at, so much to do, it's really easy to lose yourself in there so that will wrap it up oh one more thing if you're interested uh, this was the winning costume for this year this was amazing homer simpson in his moo with the computer and the whirly bird and gibby ride or everybody dies <laughs> hands down best costume i saw but again like i said you've heard my thoughts on all of this now i'm curious to know yours comment below let me know let's talk everything the best of san diego comic-con 2023 reveals And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, all of the reveals, it's all in the the eye of the beholder, right? There's no right or wrong answers. But rest assured, whatever you may like, well, there's going to be a lot of it coming soon. Except for the real Ghostbusters. Hasbro, come on. Let's see something done with that property. And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.